Jacob Butler Pauly, and I am a sophomore at Will Rice College majoring in sociology. My project focused on evaluating alternative seating arrangements such as bike desks, under desk elliptical stations, and standing desks for possible implementation into Bonkin study spaces. After an extensive literature review, a survey of all Rice undergraduates, and a cost benefit analysis, my research concluded that Bondrin Library should implement a pilot program using the underdesk elliptical stations and the standing desk. So first, here's a brief outline of my presentation today. I'll begin by describing recent trends in alternative seating arrangements and the increasing need to move away from the traditional options. Then I will describe the results of my literature review using the three options of the bike desk, the underdesk elliptical station, and the standing desk. Then I'll describe the results of my survey, which was incorporated into the larger survey of all Rice undergrads. And finally, I will use a cost-benefit analysis to explain my conclusion on the pilot program. When asked to describe a study space, many students will typically describe the traditional desk and chair. However, recent research from the Mayo Clinic suggests that prolonged periods of sitting can have detrimental effects to health. Adults who spend more than four hours per day with sedentary screen time have higher risks of obesity, increased blood pressure, increased blood sugar, excess body fat, and an increased risk of developing cardiovascular disease and cancer. As a result of this research, many companies have decided to design options that incorporate movement into sitting. These are alternative seating arrangements. So in the top far left, we have the bike desk, which has quiet pedals, a height adjustable seat, an attached desk, and a strap to secure any material on this desk. It retails for about $300 and it was chosen into our study because of recent trends at other universities, such as Clemson University. In the top middle, we have the underdesk elliptical station, which resembles the pedals of a normal gym elliptical. It was chosen because many Rice staff use a similar device in their workplace and the program could easily be expanded to all Rice undergrads. It retails for about $169. The last three options are three different types of standing desks. In the top, we have a portable height adjustable option. Here we have a three standing option, and here we have a sit to stand desk version. These retail for about $100 to $400, and the standing desk is included into our study because Bondurant Library currently has some standing desks. Any suggestions to this field would simply be an extension of what we already have. So now that I have the three options, I decided to begin my literature review. I started with the bike desk pictured here, um, and this device has been the topic of many scientific research articles. One article studied the relationship between exercise and cognitive ability, and found that studying while exercise can have slight benefits to recalling information. However, this result was not statistically significant and cannot alone justify implementation. Another research article from Clemson University studied the relationship between using a bike desk and subjective well-being. The data suggested that students who used a bike desk reported higher levels of motivation, increased energy, and improved mood. But again, this result was not statistically significant and cannot alone justify implementation. There are significant harms to the bike desk, however, one of them being a harm to productivity. I had the opportunity to interview Dr. Cecilia Valdez of Baylor College of Medicine who has done extensive research into bike desks after purchasing a few of these options for medical students. As you can see in this picture, the bike desk comes with an attached desk, and during a site visit, Dr. Valdez demonstrated how material on the desk will shake with a pedaling motion, a phenomenon that she describes as screen shake. Because the body is sedentary on the seat of the bike and the material is moving, this confusion can cause nausea in some and unproductive studying for all. Because the bike desk has only slight benefits but significant harms, it should not be considered for implementation. Next, we have the underdesk elliptical station. Make sure here. The underdesk elliptical station would also incorporate movement into studying, and thus a lot of the same benefit articles from the bike desk can be applied here. Again, that means that there are slight benefits to cognitive ability and slight benefits to subjective well-being. Most significantly though, the bike desk would eliminate the hindrance to productivity because it does not come with an attached desk. It can be used in conjunction with a traditional Fondren desk. The biggest concern of the underdesk elliptical station concerns ergonomics. The pedals are not height adjustable and taller students might find that their knees would hit their desk when they were using it. This problem can easily be remedied by placing the device underneath taller desks 
and providing proper educational materials on how to use this device. The harms do not disqualify the machine from implementation. However, it will be important to gather more data on the benefits because they alone cannot justify implementation. Therefore, I recommended that Fondren consider the product for a pilot program in order to use the user experience office to gather more data. So finally, I conducted my literature review on the standing desk, the options that are shown here. Research at Texas A&M University found that students who use a standing desk had significant increases in working memory and function. Furthermore, research articles published in the Journal of Occupational and Environmental Medicine found that people who use a standing desk had positive benefits to mood and energy and a reduced risk of developing cardiovascular disease. Like the under-desk elliptical station, the largest concern concerns ergonomics. If a student were to use this device for too long and not enforce proper posture, he or she could do real harm to his or her body. Again, this problem can be easily addressed with proper educational and training materials or even by enforcing a checkout limit on how long a student can use the desk. Therefore, because the benefits are significant and the harms are, can easily be remedied, I suggest that the standing desk be incorporated into the pilot program with the under desk elliptical station. After my literature review, I have the opportunity to add a survey to the larger survey of all Rice undergraduates to gauge student interest on these devices and see if this was really a need in the library. Working with the Office of Institutional Effectiveness, I was able to design a survey that first introduced the three options, pointed out key features, and pointed out some of the results from my literature review. I first asked students if they were satisfied with current equipment, and most students reported that they were satisfied. This is important because it suggests that we should not implement drastic changes in current equipment as that would not be seen as favorable to the students. Furthermore, I asked students where they most study to decide for optimal locations to place these devices. Most students stated that they studied on the first floor, but there wasn't even spread on the other floors. This suggests that while a higher proportion of machines should be placed on the first floor, the portable option might be useful for our students. And finally, I asked students to rank their Proceed productivity at the three options, as well as the current quantum desk, to determine if students would even be willing to use these devices. Students rank their productivity as highest with the final desk, followed by the under desk elliptical station, the standing desk, and followed finally the bike desk. From the survey, I was able to conclude that we should slowly introduce new desks, consider a portable option, and start with the under desk elliptical station and standing desk, as they were perceived as most favorable by students. So I've discussed my cost-benefit analysis throughout my presentation, but this serves as a summary slide before the conclusion. As we saw in the literature review, bike tests only have slight benefits to cognitive ability and subjective well-being, with significant harms to productivity. Students also rank this device as least productive, therefore we should not consider further implementation of this device. The underdesk elliptical station has many of the same slight benefits as bike tests, but can eliminate the hindrance to productivity. There are ergonomic concerns that could be easily addressed, and the students did rank this device very favorably. Because the benefits are very significant, we should begin with a pilot program in order to gather more data on this device's impact to students. And finally, with the standing desk, we saw significant benefits to cognitive ability, and this device was ranked very favorably by students. There were ergonomic concerns as well, but by enforcing a checkout limit, we would be able to reduce these issues. Again, the standing desk should be implemented into our larger pilot program. So finally, let's discuss the pilot program. I suggested in my research that Fondren Library purchase five standing desks and three under-desk elliptical stations in order to gather more student data on how these devices impact student well-being. Uh, as I mentioned before, standing desks are currently implemented into Fondren Library. And I had the opportunity to speak with Dr. Jeffrey Koffler, who worked on the standing desk, and worked on where to put them. Through my talks with Jeffrey Koffler, I learned that the standing desks are currently on the first floor of the library, and future standing desks can be implemented there as well. If a portable option is preferred, we could have a portable option at circulation and check it out. However, the actual implementation and fine-tuned details will be addressed by future researchers. The underdesk elliptical station would be placed on different, beneath different desks on the first floor of the library in order to have student visibility and to garner more support. Future researchers should work with the uh, user experience office in order to create a research model to gather more data on how these devices affect students. Furthermore, future
future researchers can create proper educational and training materials in order to advertise for these machines and make sure students are safe while using alternative seating arrangements. Finally, future researchers can work with Jeffrey Koffler and other departments in, in Fondue Library in order to determine other optimal locations for these devices. In conclusion, my work showed that Fondry Library should implement a pilot program of the underdesk elliptical station and the standing desk in order to improve student well-being and gather more data on these devices. I'd like to end by acknowledging the people who helped me with my project, uh, Dr. Lisa Spiro and the Friends of Fondrian for supporting the project and supporting me with my presentations, um, Sue Garrison and Melinda Flannery who were my mentors for this project. Without their guidance and their support, I would be completely lost. Um, and finally, I'd like to thank the Office of Institutional Effectiveness, Risk Management, Dr. Jean Pilcher, Dr. Cecilia Valdez, and all the Rice undergrads who participated in the survey. Without the data from these people, I wouldn't have been able to complete my study. Thank you. So, do we have questions for, for Neha or for any of the fellows? Yeah. Jeff? Are the other school machines pretty quiet? Yes, so the pedals, the machine is built in order for the pedaling motion to be really quiet, not like a gym elliptical, which has some noise to it. Um, the actual mechanics of it, I'm a little fuzzy on. I don't really understand how machines are built. Um, but I have been able to speak with Jeffrey Koffler on making sure that the machines are at a certain quiet level in order to be on our first floor. Right. Yes? What was the process for taking your questions into the hall? Yeah, so I met with the Office of Institutional Effectiveness and explained my project to them and how I was very interested in learning how Rice undergraduates would react to this device. Um, after introducing my project, they helped me word questions in a way that I would get the data that I was looking for um, and frame it in a way that made sense to students as well as keeping them informed on what was happening. Yes? Um, was any data collected by graduate students? Um, so the literature, from? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not a graduate student, um, but I did my literature review based on different research articles that I was able to find, as well as testimonials and user reviews. And then the survey I conducted with the Office of Institutional Effectiveness. So I don't believe that graduate students were. Great questions. Yes. Did you do like what other university libraries are doing this? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, the one that most university libraries are currently offering is the bike desk. So when I discussed the Clemson University study, Dr. June Pilcher has actually uh, implemented these bike desks in order to study subjective well-being. So they have a separate room in their library where they have, I believe, eight bike desks that students can check in or check out. 